All right, so let's run through the design and documentation of this part to prepare it for manufacturing. So for this part right here, we actually have multiple configurations. We have one that is for the 3D printing, one for the die casting. This is the final die cast uh, geometry. And then we've created a simplified one for the machining. Um, nothing says we can't do the other one, but since we're not doing a very high volume of this and we just want it to be a functional machine part uh, and that geometry doesn't actually matter, it's just kind of for weight savings and to design for manufacturing for die casting, this is the design that we're going to create. Now the first thing I want to do is make a drawing. So I'm going to say make drawing from part and I'm going to use the standard out of the box plain SOLIDWORKS template. And we're gonna kind of set up our template the way we wanna use it from here, from scratch. So I'll start out with your sheet size. I'm gonna say B landscape and click OK. And we should be kind of off to a pretty good start. So first thing I always do is just bring in some views. Uh, main thing you're doing when you bring in views is you're checking to see, you know, is the scale right? You're also adding information to make it possible for it to fill in the title block. All right, so a couple things I first notice. First one is the scale is pretty off. Let's go one to two instead of one to one. That'll give us a lot more room. The next thing I notice is these center marks. Every single hole has a center mark on it. And I don't generally like it that way because I'm gonna come in and do linear center marks, connected center marks. And so usually this is what I start with whenever I use a standard template. I wanna fix that. I also want to look at the title block. So in the title block, uh, there's a few things I don't like. So for example, um, the drawing number, right? This file needs to be saved as a drawing number so that it fills in correctly. Uh, it is possible to go in and turn that into a custom property, but I, I do plan on saving my drawings as a seven digit number. So that's fine that it's really big and, and weird like that. Scale, weight, uh, revision, there is no revision right now, so that's not showing up. Uh, I do want to kind of set up my title. So if I come in here and right click and say edit sheet format, you can click on this and see what it's linked to. So right now this is linked to the description of the part that's on the sheet. PRP sheet means the model specified in the sheet properties. That's the first view you drop typically. So that's fine. That title's fine. This is almost empty. This is, uh, let's see what is in here. Company name of the drawing. So if I come into my drawing, I don't have company name. So I can come in and either find it or add it. I don't see it in the list here. Oh, there it is. And so we'll say MLC CAD systems. Click OK and that shows up nicely. I might want to change the font. Uh, our standard font is Arial, so that looks better. Um, drawn by, everything looks good here. Um, my tolerances though, which is kind of a large part of this, uh, this entire book and this entire lesson series, they're not filled out. So let's start talking about general tolerances. And in the book, we have a couple of different methods of creating general tolerances. In North America, you're basically always going to see something where the number of decimal places, right, the number of des dimension decimal places in inches uh, determines what the tolerance is going to be. Uh, and it's going to vary depending on what type of model you have. So for example, in this one, uh, it says dimensions are in inches, tolerances, fractional. This is going to be a machined part. I don't expect fractional tolerances. Uh, if I was doing, you know, weldments and various other things with this drawing template, I would definitely use it, but I don't need that. Angular, again, this is going to be a machining template only, so I'm only going to put in uh, the dimensions that I want here. And one of the classic mistakes that I see people make is they will come in and add or forget to put in an angular dimension. And so it needs to be specific and different from the linear dimensions, quite simply because angles uh, cannot be measured down to really tight values. Half a degree is typically the tightest you'll want to go because there just isn't a great way to measure it that accurately. And you could probably get linear measurements to kind of determine what the angle would be and get a much more accurate reading. 
So for the two place decimal, let's do something like uh, 0 0.01 inches. For three place, we might want to do 0 0.005 inches, so five thousandths. Uh, and then this is, again, machine drawing, so I might want to put in a four decimal. This is completely up to you, and it needs to fit within your company standards. But let's say we do a plus minus 0 0.0005, so five ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, and that should be fine. I don't need to put in a one uh, decimal entry. I think that's not probably going to get used very much. I'm going to move this up a little bit because, see, I have this interpret geometric tolerancing per, and then it doesn't add one. Make sure to always be careful about putting something in here, right? You want to make sure that the information uh, is called out appropriately. Uh, you know, each standard is going to be a little bit different. So this is ASME Y 14.5-2018. Just make sure that it is appropriate for what you guys are doing. All right, looks like that one's a little bit big. Let's just add another line there. That looks pretty good. Um, the material came in okay. The finish is coming in from the uh, model. So I just need to go to my model and change the finish there. Um, now this application next assembly used on, this isn't something I typically use. And so what I usually do for my templates, or what I'm planning on doing for this one, is to just delete all that, uh, come in here and trim all this, and I'm just going to take this piece right here, and I'm going to say move entities, and we'll just grab it and pull it over, snap it right there. Proprietary and confidential, the information contained, sole property of our company, put in our company name. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with a whole bunch of other stuff, but just make sure that the title block matches your company standards. Um, there may be some additional things you wanna put in here. One of the things we often did uh, in our title blocks uh, at a company I was at where the machinists would kind of hoard drawings, they would stash them away inside their toolboxes and they wouldn't tell anyone where they were. We would actually come in and do something like this. We would we'd say the date, and then we uh, add that. And so all that does is just gives us an idea of when this was printed so we know if this is a three-year-old drawing that they've been keeping a hold of or whether this is the newest one. Um, you know, obviously your revision should take care of that, but at this company that wasn't always done uh, every single time.